I have long been interested in the future of productivity, writing many articles about how AI is going to evolve things and how we're going to do a lot less in the future. 2022 really rocketed everything up with productivity software and AI in general. So I wanted to dive into three big changes I think could be coming in the future with artificial intelligence and productivity software. So before we begin, this video is brought to you by Pipedrive. Pipedrive is a sales CMRM software, very powerful. We previously used it at a company before and found it to be fantastic for managing the sales pipeline process. It's great for being able to connect relationships and bring everything into one location, but also nurture them and make sure you keep everything updated. So you can check out Pipedrive in the link in the description. So I wanted to talk about three ways that AI is going to change productivity software and I'm going to do this with three chapters, repetition, skills and user interface. So let's start with chapter one, repetition. Productivity has long been manually organized and that basically means it's in your hands to organize yourself, whether that's moving tasks around, managing your calendar, or even managing your notes. And historically, that has been probably the best way to do it. There's been no other way. But AI is going to change that quite dramatically. And it's going to do that by doing small things for you, by learning how you've used the application in the past. And what's crazy is the applications that you've been using for the longest uh, could potentially become the most powerful applications depending on the company's AI future. So here's an example. Imagine you've been using Evernote for 10 years and you've been doing certain processes and systems like uploading notes, moving to certain notebooks, uh, organizing your tags, or maybe even titling stuff. Small administration bits that are the essence of productivity. Well, the longer you've been using it, the more keystrokes you've been doing, the more actions you've been taking, the likelihood of Evernote learning something like this and how you work um, and organizing that in the right location is probably much closer than you think. Now, this is why I talk about the manualization of productivity applications turning from being productive to actually being more of a mindfulness habit. Now, hear me out. If you currently spend a lot of time linking up notes, moving things into notebooks, and organizing your tasks in a very manual sense, in three or four years' times, this will be deemed as more of a relaxation thing and a more trying to improve your mental state than actually productivity. It won't be actually helpful, it'll be unhelpful but mindful. This has actually been seen in the bullet journal market. So for those who don't know, Google bullet journals. The likelihood is you'll see notebook covers there that have been beautifully designed and taken hours doing it, whereas the actual action of doing stuff um, is a lot less of the time. But the beautiful structure there is naturally mindful and helpful to relax and, and naturally something that a lot of people do uh, to keep themselves calmer. And I think that's where productivity software is heading in the future for those that continue to manualize the productivity process. A lot to take in there. So that's chapter one and that's repetition. Number two is skills. Skills of how we work will change dramatically. Right now, skills are centric around uh, manualization, as I talked about it. It's like, how can you do as much as you humanly can? And what can you do as much as you humanly can around your day? And those are great because it's really all about, okay, if you work more hours, you'll get more output. But smarter technologies and smarter decisions in productivity software will drastically change that. And there's gonna be two key skills that you'll need, decision-making and creativity. Both of these two skills will take you forward because decision making will become a lot more uh, prevalent in productivity software. So for example, a productivity software might start doing around 40% of your administration for you, leaving more decisions to be made and quality decisions over what action you take on those items. Now, for example, hear me out, research, Say you typed in five things you wanted to get done. 
Essentially, uh, those five things would be rooted to a AI software or an AI agent that's part of the productivity software. It'll be done for you. And then decision making will be the next action for that. So you will decide what choice of action you want to take. And that will be the skill you nurture because decision making will be who makes the better decisions will have the better jobs in the future and definitely when it comes to productivity software. The next is creativity. Obviously we have generative AI at our fingertips. So it's who makes the best creative decisions and prompting that will produce the best results. And that's really up to the smart approach of humans that naturally bring that in. And if you're thinking about those skills, that decision-making and creativity, as a human, what feeds those skills? Well, actually sleeping a lot more and being a lot more healthy in a collective nature because largely we'll make better decisions and better creativity when we're in those states. So uh, health will play a lot more of a factor in the future of skill-based uh, productivity. And I currently woke up at 4.30, so if, if um, I'm talking to five, six years old, later, um, then uh, hopefully I won't be in that state. <laughs> okay, chapter three, user interface. Now I'm probably gonna really annoy all the designers out there who might be watching this because my terms uh, are very vague and very generalistic, but I hope I can explain what I mean. I think in the future, the change um, will be in uh, voice and complexity. Well, voice will very simply change the way we use a productivity application because communicating with our productivity application as it were another person working for you will change not only how we work, but also how we view ourselves at work. Um, for example, this might lend itself to a lot of people who are working from home who can communicate with the software because communication with the software will probably be one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, and secondly, it'll change the way we work because a lot of us will become managers uh, because we'll have a small team underneath us who can manage our productivity as a collective. So it's a really interesting um, aspect and approach to how we work. Next up is complexity. It's the complexity of the software. Um, everything will start to be ripped out of the system because of the way that we interact with the um, AI inside a productivity software will be largely where we can communicate with it if we want it to do an action. So everything from settings menus to notebook areas to organization systems will drastically change because of the complexity that won't be needed because once we're able to communicate with the software in a more uh, generalistic uh, way, searching and finding stuff will be different from what we're searching and finding items, we'll be searching and finding elements of the experience. So I think uh, the cleaner the experience will be uh, as time goes on because of the way that the voice will interact with you. Okay, you probably sat at home going, my brain is fried. Francesco cannot be right about any of this. <laughs> and um, I'm probably not gonna be right, um, but I definitely believe from uh, literally staring at productivity software for 10 years now, um, I believe this is a way that it's heading in the future. And um, it's quite scary to be able to put that out there because um, I definitely talked about this a long time ago about how um, these sort of softwares will like the concept of templates is just nice, but it's really impractical um, in terms of where we're heading in the future. Um, so it's it's strange when I put these stuff out there, sometimes it's, it could be quite daunting to, um, to see what people's opinions are, but that's what's great. Talk to me about your opinions. Where do you think I'm right? Where do you think I'm wrong? That's more important. I hope that it gave you an insight into where I'm thinking where productivity is heading in the future. So. I will see you soon from my future armchair, future armchairist, <laughs> predicting the future. <laughs> you know, and keep productive. <laughs> anyway, folks, if you enjoyed this video, check out Toolfinder, check out Pipe Drive. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all very soon.